You're watching HuffPost Live. I'm Nancy Red, and when you put on a red shirt, go for the beige paint while remodeling your living room, or eat off a blue plate, you're doing more than just choosing a color. You are actually making a choice that plays into a much larger picture of your happiness, health, and even wealth. To discuss how colors affect how we eat, shop, and live, we are joined by a fabulous panel, starting with Linda Lauren. She's a color and energy analyst. And in our hangout, we have psychotherapist Amy Morin. And Rajesh Bakshi, he is an associate professor at the Pamplin School of Business. Everyone, I am so excited. But Linda, I have to start with you, okay? Let's start with your relationship to color. When did you realize that you had a really unique relationship with to color? color? Okay. Three years old. I was um, always seeing colors coming out of people's mouths. So when they spoke, instead of like seeing the aura around someone, I would see color bubbles. Those bubbles eventually led to an insight of how someone was feeling. And I would be able to, as I got older, understand what certain colors meant based on how someone felt when I was seeing them. So if I saw red with my grandmother once, I saw red and I said, oh, she's not well, she's not feeling, grandma doesn't feel good. And my mother would say to me, well, she's okay. She did go to the doctor, she's okay. But my grandmother had heart issues. But I was, at the time, I was 10 at that time and didn't know. But the red told me something was wrong with her in terms of her chest. So that's how I first started to get into color, because that's how I saw it. And do you still see bubbles, or has, yes. has it evolved? Yeah, no, it's evolved into artwork. It's evolved into artwork. So yes. if, if people can be correlated to color, mm -hmm. like you said, red is like a warning sign of health. What are other colors that you see surrounding individuals, uh, and how do they correlate to an aspect of themselves or their like lives? Green, for instance would be, um, I see green p around people who are looking to heal or grow within an environment. So they want to expand awareness, but they want to expand it from a real um, growth standpoint, a real nature standpoint. It's, it's the very element of you. So green is a really good color. It's a very happy color. Uh, another color I would say would be um, purple, because purple is extremely intuitive and spiritual and when you embrace that color you will feel a harmony with yourself and your intuition because you'll be working with um, insight in a very different way. I love purple and I also noticed that your glasses are, My glasses glasses are purple. purple. I know. Yes, I, I love purple too but I like to feel that I'm even enhancing intuition by embracing that color. So instead yeah, yeah. of rose-colored glasses, which is the whole <laughs> phrase, we should be referring to purple color, purple color glasses. Right, right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. What about white or black? White, black, uh, uh, both colors. White, I can consider when you're, especially if you're looking at a house or a home, you want space. So the person is looking for more space or more new opportunities, something that offers them clarity. And then you have black, which is really good for boundaries, creating lines that will tell you a person can or cannot do certain things and in a room it's helpful too. And it's incredible. Let's say you get stuck with a, a, a black house that feels limiting and, and not spacious and, and mm -hmm. frustrating. You can still change up your environment uh, by adding different colors. It doesn't yes. have to stay the same. Just because you're dealt with a bad color hand with the base, whether it's a plate or a room or a house, you can still make things absolutely. your own. Absolutely. I, I absolutely uh, embrace that. And I feel that when you're in your home, you should stand in each room before you're going to paint and feel it. Allow it to speak to you. I mean, it, it sounds a little far-fetched, but it's not. Because you're going to spend a lot of time in those rooms. And you want those rooms to really make you feel good. So you go for colors that will embrace good vibes, positive energy, uh, your blues, your, your pale peaches, your uh, different colors that will make you feel good. But you have to go by yourself within. All right, so let's do two rooms. Uh, two rooms with very different purposes, okay. right? Let's do the bedroom. Where you're supposed to be relaxing okay. or having right. fun. Right. And let's do the home office where you're supposed to be making money and making Tech. deals happen. Home office. There are some people, I, I mean, don't agree with the general consensus, consensus of home office uh, colors being of the darker maroons and reds um, because I feel that that really, really enrages employees and people who are trying to think more clearly. So I really go by blues and greens and tans because the tan is more of a brown tan that I'm talking about and you're really working with earth tones so you are creating your own boundary in terms of grounding yourself so an office should be grounding an office should be grounding this is perfect 
This, this is, is something perfect. I would embrace. Yes, absolutely. Talk to us and about why this office is perfect. This is perfect because they've chosen wood in terms of the base color brown. They've gotten uh, tones of wood that will enhance growth. You can feel aspects of yellow. Now, yellow is creativity. You want yellow in an office environment because you want your employees and yourself to be more creative. Well, I'm glad you like it because that's a room here <laughs> at our AOL office in Post Live. So I'm glad that you like this. Okay. Uh, and there are the little swatches of yellow and the, mm -hmm. the grounding brown. Right. What about a bedroom? Bedrooms, I feel you have to consider your partner or potential partner, but always go by the basis of yourself. Like what colors do you like best? What makes you feel sleepy? Um, I like to uh, advise people to go with um, deeper colors. So you're maybe, maybe a deeper purple, a deeper blue, a deeper green. Um, if you want to really encourage romance in a bedroom, you're going for your reds and pinks. But you want to be very cautious with utilizing any colors because you don't want to overpower any kind of emotion based on the color you choose because colors definitely make us feel a sense of emotion. That's true. You don't want a completely pink uh, bedroom because then right. you won't get any sleep. See? Because romance leads to babies. I know <laughs> all too well. So what kind of colors, because many people say, it's just a baby. Right. What does it matter? Does oh, color it does. matter in the nursery? Yes. You want your baby to feel relaxed. You want your baby to also feel a sense of security and any perfect Perfect. Perfect. This is perfect. Perfect. Talk because to us you ha Perfect. You have the yellow and the, the orange is really good for energy, giving the baby energy and knowing what you want in that room. The yellow, creativity, but it's also helping that baby in terms of stomach issues because it's a, it's a chakra. Oh, that's so interesting. Area. So if you have a colicky baby, it's very helpful. It to could have that be color that blue room. or pink Absolutely. duvet or paint color. Uh -huh. Do you find, because I feel like this looks very 70s, right? Before yes. people found out the gender of their baby, they painted the nursery a very neutral Generic yellow uh -huh. color. Do you think that the uh, rise of blues and pinks, that, uh, because that's what the color of the baby's going, the, the gendered color, mm -hmm. uh, is leading to children perhaps being more unsettled or having more tummy problems? No, I, you know, you, you could say that, but I, I don't think so. I think that every situation with every child is different. And you have to embrace each room that the child's in. Well, one thing's for sure, though, like you said, introducing color into children is very important and recognizing that. That's why, Regis, mm -hmm. I can't wait to have you in here. Do you agree? Do you think it's important uh, that we look at color and how it affects children from a very early age? This is not something that has been on my bucket list of all the things <laughs> to worry about regarding my baby. Should I incorporate this? I, I think that's a very, very good question. Um, one of the things that... Uh, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but uh, way back when in the 1880s and early 19th century, um, the pink color was actually associated with the boys and blue was associated with girls. Yes, yes. because pink was closest to blood. Yes. Yes, it, it showed more energy and boisterousness, whereas blue was more demure and classy and so on. It's not until like mid, I mean, like 1940s or 50s that people even started switching the colors. And until, for instance, um, uh, girls still wore blue and boys wore pink. Uh, but what has happened since then is, of course, you know, this great marketing machinery has come into being where, you know, people are, um, you know, marketing different colors for different genders. And so now it's pretty much uh, pink is associated with girls and blue is associated with boys. Well, I would um, say this, Rajesh, in the Western world, what's interesting is, is when we're talking about color psychology, how much of it is learned, right? So when I visit my relatives in India, there's so many little boys running around in pastel purple and pastel pink because it's not as uh, it, there's not this connotation to only girls. It's really interesting how they're perfectly comfortable wearing different colors uh, that we in in America are just so against. Absolutely. One example I will give you is this um, use of color white. Like um, in the Western world, people often will wear white to weddings, but in India, white Girl. is something wear to funerals right so you know the color is associated and you mm -hmm. it's culture it's got a cultural context and there is some research actually very interesting research that shows that our preference for colors are actually based on how we encountered those colors in different contexts so for instance if you have a sister and you spend a lot of time in your sister's room and it it so happens that it's colored pink and you're a boy you're probably going to have fond memories with the color pink 
That's incredible. I love that. Linda, you were nodding. Yeah, no, I was nodding because uh, it's, that's so true. I'm Italian, and we, we think of the colors, the black and white, very different, and the, the colors very different. And white was always considered a funeral color. It wasn't considered a wedding color. Then we would light black candles, not white. So today, it's, it's, it's really a kind of uh, difficult to explain to people sometimes that you know, you have to now look at the basis of how you're lighting a candle, for instance, white versus black, and seeing how that works for you, because it's so different in so many different, uh, you know, uh, nations, so many different people. But see it, a different it's so powerful. Amy, I want to bring you into this conversation, because when we're talking about improving our life, improving our mood, uh, improving our capacity to grow and learn and thrive, color <laughs> might not be something people think about, but in your therapy practice, you acknowledge color can play an intense role. Yeah, there's a lot of research about color and, and how it makes us feel and how it causes us to think differently. And like you said before, part of it is um, and our learned associations with color, that if your color in your bedroom was a certain color as a kid, then maybe as an adult, whenever you see that color, you're reminded of it. But there's also some evidence that perhaps there's an evolutionary aspect of it that Back in the in the day, the red meant fire, so that's why it still sort of means alarm to us, or we see red fire trucks, and of course that's further associates to us that that red is should hype us up and have us on alert, those sorts of things. All right. So, what colors do you find useful in in your practice? Well, you know, everything from the color of our walls. So, for instance, to if you're going to have a therapy practice, to know that. It's good to have green to be on your on your walls because it can be a calming color. Mm -hmm. And if for parents who have a child with ADHD, the last thing you want to do is paint their bedroom orange because it'll make them bounce off the walls because it's an energizing color. And even down to what we eat and how much you eat. For somebody to know if you paint your your dining room red or yellow, for instance, mm -hmm. it can it can stimulate you and cause you to eat more. So people who are looking mm -hmm. to eat less, you can try like blue. And even people have figured out if you put a blue light in your refrigerator, it can make you eat less just by having the blue the blue color because we don't associate blue with being an appetizing color. It's not something we find in nature. There's nothing in your garden that grows that's blue. So we don't associate it with food. But it's yet, interesting that you hand, say that because I actually want to bring up something that researchers at Cornell University looked at. They said how colors affect diet. And they found that when there's low contrast between food and plates, for example, red pasta on a red plate versus a white po uh, red pasta on a white plate, people serve themselves 22% more compared to high contrast between the food and the plate. So let's say I have a white plate, I'm more likely to put less food on it than if I have a red plate and put red pasta on it. This is interesting. So like Amy said, Linda, color affects our eating habits. It can no, affect our diet. Yes, no, 100%. I mean, and she's 100% on green. I mean, that's, that, that's a given right there. I love that she said that because it's so true about that color. We don't realize. And we don't realize that we apply things to food. Red, you don't really, look at Mexican and Italian restaurants, you'll see mostly red, red and green, but red really will make you eat. So the concept that they have here is to use different plating. So they're doing contrast, contrast plating so that the food will look less appetizing, but you'll still eat it, but more appetizing in a different type of plate. Um, I'm not sure whether that works for me. I would not think it might work for a lot of people. Well, you're so tuned into color, so it might not work on you. <laughs> yeah. But Amy, this is mind-blowing stuff to the individuals often. That you that you treat they, that you kind of that they say this is a small change that I can make it doesn't cost me anything and I can actually do. Rajesh, it also might make sense as to why Pizza Hut's logo is red and white. Okay, they just want you to just eat all the pizza that you can. Right. McDonald's does the same thing too. So they use a lot of red because red actually uh, creates a feeling of hunger and uh, you know so it kind of works that way. And coming back to what Amy was saying, I mean, colors themselves, you know, they can be learned associations, but also like she was saying, that there is research that says there is an evolutionary bias to it. So for instance, the color red, it automatically uh, increases eye blink frequency, your respiratory uh, rate, um, you know, your blood pressure goes up. So there are some innate effects as well. And Amy? Those clearly have um, effects like relative to blue, for instance. And if we can go back to what um, we were discussing a little while back about uh, creativity and so on, 
again, there is research that shows that um, you know red or blue either could work in an office space actually, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Blue has been shown to be like um, the more creative color. So if you're looking for creative ideas, you know, coming up with ads and so, stuff then blue may be the right color to have in your office. And I don't know if you can see the background. I actually have blue in my office and people make fun of me for that. But Oh, really? Why do they make fun of you? It's beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's a baby blue color. So they're like, you know, who came up with this design? I said, well, you know, I, I, I got it done myself. <laughs> um, well, Amy's not going to make fun of you because in, in your background, right, Amy? Seems to it's be green, a actually. Oh, do you find right, sure it's blue. do you find it easier to connect with your clients when you're wearing a specific color? Say, do you feel people are more shut out when you're wearing black or or a pattern or something than when you're wearing a soft blue? <laughs> well, you know, often you can tell the the kind of mood that people are in, right? I can tell sometimes for my clients when they come in wearing drab colors. You know, well, perhaps they are more depressed than usual. But when you have a client that's made a, a big change over the week and suddenly they've boosted their mood, they come in wearing yellow. And so it can certainly give you a lot of insight into how somebody's feeling. And I'm sure that they can get that vibe off of me, too, based on how I'm dressed. Well, I just always try to look flattering, so I'm always in black. But that doesn't necessarily have anything no, to do no. with my mood or my energy. Well, no, but it could be just that you are... It could be a barrier of protection, though. I mean, you know, you could be protecting yourself with black so that people don't see into too much of what you're about. I mean, that's, it's a mystery. It's also a mystery color. So it's, it's good for cloaking us. But uh, it can also be an extremely positive color. I wear it because my clients like the fact that I do purple and I'll be in black some days. But a lot of times you'll see me look all colors. I love that I'm a mystery. <laughs> You're a mystery lady. Woohoo, a mystery lady. Well, here's the thing. Not everyone uh, wants to necessarily wear patterns on their bodies, but you have here some mm -hmm. patterns that you've created that harmonize mm -hmm. the color effect. Talk to us about uh, this, this painting and the importance of it. This is, um, it's called, well, it's my energy art, Linda Lauren's energy art. It's based on when I look at a person, I don't know if you, there you go. I, when I look at a person, I can, like I said, discern certain colors and what those colors could be of benefit to them for. And I will do a piece of artwork that they can embrace. They can put it on their backdrop of their computers and anywhere just to get the feeling of what they need in terms of positive energy. It's about the color you connect with. So I'll look at them. I'll connect colors. And then um, they'll have a piece that they can actually you can actually have material made with this. That's incredible. So. And then also you brought some flowers in. Talk to yes. us about flowers. Yes. Of course, everyone likes to receive flowers. Yes, uh, because but they're a great offering. They're an offering of peace, of love, and of positive energy. And I always would say flowers are important. You should always mix them. You should have your yellows, your, your pinks, your, um, if you can have purple, absolutely. Always incorporate purple. Flowers will brighten any room, but they'll bring in the note of positive energy that you really want to embrace. That is so important for people who are coming into the room after you because you don't want them to feel negative energy and you want to keep that vibe high. Well, it's interesting though. you say you always want mixed flowers. Yes. Why would you prefer a mixed bouquet because versus a red rose 24 red, dozen? Okay, but red is encouraging one specific goal, one specific feeling. <laughs> and that feeling, depending upon the person, can range from Rage to love, movement Passion. to death. It could be anything. It could be uh, alarm, like they were saying before. So you're kind so, of hedging your bets. Yes, with so the, you're better off with just multicolors. Multi that's fantastic. Uh, well, one of the things we actually want all of you to do, we have our HuffPost Live logo. Uh -huh. Rajiv, we'd love to know what you think of this, <laughs> and everyone else can weigh in as well. Right here, here it is on the screen. What say you? <laughs> Rajiv, I, I, I think it's an awesome logo because a couple of things stand out to me. One is this whole idea of contrast. So there is some research that says, you know, finally what matters is, especially with websites and all, how isolated, whether you can make the key thing isolated, whether you have enough contrast. In other words, if everything is the same color, you probably don't, you know, you don't notice it, you don't pay attention. The contrast comes out first. The second thing I like is the choice of the color red. It's a warm, passionate color. Mm -hmm. And I also like the choice of white because white is elegance, simplicity. So all in all, I think, you know, you guys have got it right. Uh, I, it's very, yes. I agree with him. And uh, I'd like to add that 
In this case, red will move you faster into the, the news media and what you really need to embrace with clarity because the white is also uh, clarity. It's also that clearness that you need. That's so I agree. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. We appreciate each of you for joining us. Thank you all so much, Amy, Rajev, and Linda, for being here and talking colors with us as the mystery lady in all black. <laughs> I'm thrilled to find this information out. And thank all of you for watching. Please keep watching and commenting because the conversation always continues here at HuffPost Live.